Hi, fishy folks, and happy Sunday fun day to you. By now, most of the world is on global lockdown. At least you should be. Just stay away from people. Be safe. That's enough of that. I didn't even stay at a Holiday Inn Express yesterday. I'm just some dude with a camera. Anyway, today's video, overflow. So last week I did a video about my auto water change system and I told you how water went in the tank. Today's video is how does the water leave the tank? I'm gonna go into detail about the system, the drain system. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about how I drill tanks, some of the hardware used uh, for the overflow system and how it works. So do me a favor guys, grab a snack and a beverage and uh, stand by. Fish you folks, we're back. Listen, you guys just watched my new intro that I created myself on my computer. I'm very proud of it. I'm looking for some feedback though. Does it need music? Is it too long? Should it say subscribe and all that other stuff? You know, let me know what you think. I'm really looking for some feedback. All right, today's video, uh, auto water change drain system, I guess we'll call it. And uh, just a quick review, I did a video on my auto water change system, how my tanks get filled last week. I'll put a link up here for you and down in the description. Um, and just as a refresher, my city water goes through three filters, a sediment filter, two carbon box filters. That'll take out any chlorine and sediment, obviously. Um, I do not have chloramines in my city water, so I don't need any special filters. If you have chloramines, my system won't work you're gonna need a different set of filters or a little bit more money and probably require some more maintenance. So I'm lucky I don't have that. You're gonna to have to do some research because I don't know anything about that. Uh, so the water goes through those filters to irrigation solenoids controlled by an irrigation timer. There's three different zones that go on at different times and fill the tanks. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm okay. I'm fine. I have a shirt. You can buy the shirt that proves I'm fine. Teespring.com. Anyway. Water, over, water flows into the tank and then it has to leave the tank. Well, it overflows. And somebody made a comment, what is it, overflow on the floor? Yeah, that's, that's what it does. Anyway, the water overflows into a drain. And that's what this video is gonna be about. I'm gonna explain uh, the bulkhead and how it overflows and how that system works. We're gonna go behind the wall here uh, to look at the drain system and that kind of stuff. So first, let's talk about bulkhead. So, uh, the way that my system works, the way I design it, is I drill a hole in every tank and I put a bulkhead and a pipe in the tank and then a drain it, and it goes to a drain pipe which goes to a sump which then drains into the city drain. Now uh, the bulkhead is a couple different parts and um, let me just explain to you the three main parts of the bulkhead. So you drill a hole in a tank and you need something like this to do that. This is a glass hole saw. It's also used for, um, it's a diamond hole saw actually, but it's used for glass and granite and stuff. And uh, I forget what size this is, but there's a chart when you order these. I, order, I always order these from Gemco. I'll put a link down for Gemco. John of Gemco is fantastic. He's been supplying the hobby for a million years. He supports all the local clubs. Um, and he has great products and very knowledgeable. Um, anyway, so you need a, a hole saw like, you know, the, where this will fit. So usually when you buy bulkheads, it'll tell you what size hole you need and that's the size hole saw. You can buy these on Amazon or eBay. Um, I've tried them both. They make a couple different quality levels. Uh, if you're only gonna do a few tanks, you can buy the cheapest one. Uh, that's what I do. I usually get about eight or nine tanks out of it, then it's garbage um, because it's not sharp and you start cracking and chipping stuff. Ask me how I know. Um, but I'll put a link down below for, for the hole saws that I've, I've bought for these bulkheads. Bulkheads come in different sizes. These are half inch. They go all the way up to, I don't know, two or three inches for big, big marine tanks and stuff. So you drill a hole in the tank. <clears throat> It's really not that difficult. I'll put a link to that video over here. Anyway, so you have this gasket right here. Let me take it off so you can see it. It's just a rubber O-ring gasket. Um, and that goes in between the bulkhead and the tank. And that's what actually seals the hole right there. 
then this goes through the hole. So this is the inside of the tank. This goes like this. Now this is outside the tank. And then you just secure it with the nut. And uh, you don't want to tighten these too tight, just hand tight, because uh, you will break a tank if you don't. Anyway, so then this, this is your hole now, right? Okay, so in the tank, sorry, the crystal ball's itching. Where you drill this hole kind of sort of matters. When I first set up the fisherman, I drilled these very high because I didn't realize you could extend this, and I'll, I'll go over that in a second, but you have this um, screen, and I thought, you know, it either had to go like this at your water level, or there's an elbow you can buy, and then you can fit it like this, and I thought that's as high as it, that's how you'd have to do it till I, I really did some more research. And uh, I found out you could put the hole anywhere. And so then I started putting the hole in the middle. And then what you do is you just take some PVC pipe, some three quarter PVC pipe, which fits perfectly in the half inch uh, bulkhead. And this is called a standpipe. And uh, this extends, you know, where you can put the hole. Also, you can adjust the water level, uh, you know, like, I try to have every other tank a little lower so it's harder for the guppies to jump because I don't use lids for the most part. Um, and that's why sometimes if you look at my tank, the water's like this low in the tank. You might be say saying to yourself, but, but you have an auto water chain system. Why is that? Well, there's two reasons. One, I have it low for a reason so they don't jump. Or two, the auto water chain system isn't working in that particular tank, which is a good thing to know. Anyway, back to here. So now, now you have this, which doesn't fit because this is a different size pipe. So you take just a coupler, boom, boom, there's your stand pipe. Now, you can buy black PVC, it's expensive, but you can buy it. These are um, for electrical conduit. They're a little cheaper, I don't care what it looks like, that's what I buy. You can buy those in white too though. Um, you can also spray paint PVC if you want it to look black. You can hide it pretty easily. It's really not that difficult. All right, so that's in the tank. And I'll show you real life in a second behind the scenes here. But then you have outside the tank. So <clears throat> bulkheads come a couple different ways. Um, this one is slip threaded. So slip on the inside, which means it's smooth, which means you can put, uh, you know, PVC or whatever. And then on the outside, I like the threaded kind. <coughs> I'm okay. Um, because if you use slip, you have to glue it in or it leaks. And then if you have, if the tank breaks or something, you lose the bulkhead. And I'm a cheap SOB, so uh, I don't like to glue things because I want to take it apart to reuse the parts. So I like the threaded on the outside. And uh, here's another bulkhead with a threaded elbow. See, it's threaded. Uh, and that, you put some Teflon tape on that bad boy, tighten this up and there's your drain. And now this will drain into some tubing, which I'll show you as well when we get to the back. All right, let me make sure we went over all the parts. We have how the water gets in the tank. I drill a hole, I put a bulkhead, we went over all the bulkhead parts. You need a glass hole saw, link down below if you're interested. Um, Gemco, love the Gemco. I'll put a link, like I said, for John at Gemco down below. Very, very old school website, by the way. Just be prepared. It's like from 1993 or something. And you can't order online. You actually have to call an order, which I, like if there was an app, I would order on the app. It's, it's great. Anyway, all right, I'm gonna grab the camera. We're gonna go mobile. I'm gonna show you behind the scenes how it actually works and uh, the drain system and my sump and all that kind of good stuff. So, <coughs> still, I'm okay. Refill your snack and your beverage. And uh, stand by. All right, fishy folks, this is a seldom seen place in Michael's Fish Room. This is the back of the long row of tanks. And it is, I mean, it is sort of chaos back here, but I kind of know what's going on, so, so that's fine. So here's a big drain pipe. I think it's a three inch drain pipe. That's a two inch drain pipe down there. And let me sort of explain how this works. So, let me find a good tank, like this tank right here. So, you can see the overflow is right there. Let me see, see it's right there. And the water overflows through the bulkhead, down the elbow, and then into this plastic pipe, this plastic tubing. Now, I'm cheap. I probably had a short piece already cut, 
Then I just heated it up and stuck in some PVC to make it down to the drain. Now you might be saying, why is this taped? Well, these are two pieces and the coupler was really expensive. So I put them together, I glued it um, like this and it leaked a little bit and I put this tape on. This tape went on for two years, not one problem. Um, I forget what it's called. I'll try to find a, a, what I use so you can check it out too. But uh, So the drain pipes, <clears throat> here's the thing about drain. Legally, if you're gonna you know, get legal on me, there, there has to be an amount of slope. For every foot, it has to drop a certain amount. Uh, and I, it's different in every city or every state, but you should look it up just so you know. You want the water to actually drain. You don't want it to pool up in there or else you'll have a problem. And uh, I don't remember what mine is. I did measure it and it is actually within code, which is kind of strange, but it does work just fine. So anyway, so the water drains, drains into the drain, and then it comes down here to my sump. And here's the sump. And so it, I have that big elbow. It does splash a little bit. Uh, you, I, I could extend it, but I haven't. I'm not really concerned. Ooh, I don't know if you can see this little tiny baby pleco. Right there. Baby super red. Sorry, I love baby plecos. They're so cute and adorable. Anyway, here's my sump. It's just an old 55. There's a sump pump in it, and it's an actual sump pump that has its own float. Um, and that water comes up through this pipe and then through this pipe and then up there to this pipe right there to the city drain. Now there's a bunch of stuff here in this drain that's called a union and that just I can actually take it apart and service the pump if I need to. Um, this is a one-way valve so the water comes up and then whatever isn't drained will come back down and go back into the uh, sump. And if I didn't have that one-way valve, that pump would run pretty much continuously as the water shot up and then it stopped, it would come down and cause that pump to come back on. And so that's why you need that. I'll also try to put a link to that. That was, uh, I had to get that on eBay. I'm sorry, on Amazon actually. I couldn't find it anywhere else. Now this, as you know, I like to repurpose stuff. This is part of my old drain system and how I had it and how I used to do water changes. And basically, I don't, I don't really care that it's here. Uh, if I ever redo the actual plumbing, which I am considering doing, uh, especially if this quarantine goes on much longer, which it will, I, I figure, real quick, I figure we're gonna be in quarantine till at least the middle of May, probably the end of May. And then hopefully things will get back to normal. Anyway, um, if I redo it, I'll, I'll make it much neater and cleaner, but most of it is from recycled parts from my fish room and other builds. Um, a couple of things about these <clears throat> uh, bulkheads, as you can see here, you can see some water marks there. It's not really focusing, uh, but you do have to periodically tighten these, which I do every now and again. Um, that's that for the auto water change system. Look at that. Oh, that button just went away. Um, you could have one drain and then uh, everything would have to be extended down into one drain. I have two drains and simply put, when I started the fish room, uh, I didn't measure the bottom correctly and there wouldn't be enough slope um, on the bottom uh, how I wanted it to go into the sump. It wouldn't drain fast enough. And so um, that's why if you look here, these tanks are, are lifted up a little bit. These these 20 gallons are lifted up or else there wouldn't be enough slope. So um, if you have a floor drain, that's actually much, much better than the actual sump that I have. Um, when you design a system like this, you want as little possibility of things breaking and you flooding. And this is definitely a flood point right here. If that sump pump stops working, which it has, um, then when my water water chain system comes on, it will drain, I don't know, 30, 40, 50 gallons of water on the floor. And that wouldn't be fun. Um, I do recommend buying a high quality sump pump. I've bought two cheap ones over the last four years that I've had to replace because they get clogged or they break. They get clogged and break or they just keep getting clogged. Like I said, that is an actual real sump pump for a sump in your house. Um, and they come in different sizes. You can figure all that out yourself. Anyway, 
that does it for the auto water change drain system. Of course, any questions, let me know in the comments down below. And uh, next in the fish room sort of design update, I'll be talking about my air system. That'll be next week sometime. All right, guys, don't forget to check out my website, michaelsfishroom.com, and uh, hope you enjoy. I'm gonna go into detail about uh, how I drill tanks. Not really. Uh, did I say that already? Anyway, I'll have to edit that out. <clears throat> Hiya, fishy folks, and happy Sunday fun day to you. By now, most of the country's on lockdown. Do me a favor, just stay in your goddamn house. That's, while that's good advice, that's really not why I'm here. <laughs> Fishy fo ah! Just call me Peter Brady. Hiya, fishy folks, and happy Sunday fun day to you. Hope everyone's doing okay in this global pandemic. I'm just here for a little comedy relief, dropping some knowledge about overflows, and uh, maybe sell you some fish while we're at it. So, like I said, I didn't really say I'm distracted. Yeah. <laughs> 